Today I'm going to be taking a look at the recent release of KOS. KOS is an independent Linux distribution. Independent means it's not based on a parent distribution. It's not forked from something else. It's its own thing. And KOS, it's always been a rather interesting Linux distribution. They focus on the KDE Plasma desktop. And of course, KOS maintains its own repository of software being an independent distribution. About a week ago, they had a big release. They released KOS version 20. 2022.06. So I'm going to download that ISO and I'm going to take it for a spin inside a virtual machine. So I downloaded the ISO for KOS. I will say that when you go to their website and go to the downloads page, they don't offer a torrent download. They only have a HTTP download and that thing takes a long time. I'm talking it could take hours. So that is one thing I wish the KOS team actually did is had an official torrent that was available because right now the download speeds for this thing are very slow. Now one thing I will also mention is KOS, the name, the spelling K-A-O-S. You would actually think that's pronounced chaos and that's actually the way I have pronounced it on videos in the past when I've taken a look at KOS. But it's actually supposed to be KOS, not chaos, which I think is unfortunate because I actually think chaos, calling your operating system chaos, that's kind of cool. That would have been great. I'm going to go ahead and choose the first option here at the boot menu. I'm just going to go ahead and get into the live environment. And we boot into our live environment. Now, the way they have KDE Plasma set up, I find rather interesting and a little bit strange because they have a side panel, which you often see these days because so many people now have these ultra wide monitors where you've got a lot more horizontal space rather than vertical space. So it kind of makes sense to throw your panel on the side. But typically you throw it on the left hand side because in, in most situations, everything is done left to right on a computer. It's really weird to have a panel on the right because how often are you going to the right side of a screen? Think about all of your uh, controls for like your, your web browser and, and things like that. It's kind of weird to just throw all of this on the right hand side of the screen. It would have made a lot more sense from an ergonomic standpoint to actually put it on the left hand side of the screen. I'm sure you can change that, but let me go ahead and Run through an installation. They are going to use the Calamaris installer. They're shipping with the latest Calamaris 3.3. So I'm going to click install KOS. First, we get a welcome message and we can choose the language for the installer here. American English is the default, and that's fine for me. I'm just going to click next. And then the time zone. It has correctly chosen the central time zone in the US. And it's kind of strange. Their Calamaris installer actually has a map and it's using some kind of uh, geolocation to determine exactly where I am. That is actually kind of cool. I've never seen that before in anyone else's Calamaris installer. I'm wondering if that is an option that any distribution could use and maybe um, most of them just don't choose this option with Calamaris but that is interesting but it's chosen America slash Chicago which is the central time zone for me so that is correct I'm going to click next and then the keyboard layout uh, English US is the default and that's fine for me but of course you can change it if you need to and you can also uh, test out the keyboard layout by typing a message here you know whatever it is you want to type you can type in this little test box here I'm going to click next then you get to the little packages screen here. And do you want LibreOffice installed or not? For purposes of this VM, I'll actually not install LibreOffice because I don't plan on using it. I can't, I can't actually tick that off. I, maybe I have to tick this one, no Office Suite. If I tick that one, uh, that one automatically sets. So I see they control each other. If you flip one on, you flip the other off. They also have a minimal install option, but I'm going to go ahead and let them install their full suite of applications minus LibreOffice because I want to see the default packages that are installed on your standard KOS installation. So I'm going to click next. Now we need to partition our drive. You have two standard options here in Calamaris. You have erase disk, which means this will give the entire virtual hard drive of my virtual machine to KOS. So typically if you're installing an operating system as the only operating system on that disk, this is the option you want to choose. Manual partitioning is the option if you have some weird custom configuration partition scheme that you need to set up, or if you're dual booting, then it makes sense to do a manual partition 
but I'm going to choose the first option, erase disk. You have the option of no swap, swap, no hibernate, swap with hibernate, or swap to file. For purposes of this virtual machine, I'm going to do swap to file because it'll save on space. And then we have our file system. They are defaulting to XFS for the file system, which is fine. It's very old and stable. A lot of servers use XFS. You also have Extend 4, which is another Linux standard file system. It's very stable. And yeah, I'm just going to choose their default with XFS for purposes of this video. And let's go ahead and click Next. Now the bootloader. What do we want? We do we want to use grub absolutely or do we want no bootloader and you absolutely want a bootloader uh, don't choose no bootloader unless you absolutely know what you're doing you only want to choose no bootloader if you already have a bootloader installed especially if you're already uh, dual booting with another operating system then choosing no bootloader might work for you but otherwise uh, not installing a bootloader means that your system won't be bootable so I'm gonna click next and now we need to set up our user my name what is your name I'm just gonna call my name DT and then my login name of course will be DT and then we need to set the host name for this computer I'm gonna call this computer KOS dash vert then we need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user and then repeat the password then I get a warning message that my strong and complicated password is too short. Can I just ignore that? Yes, I can just click that. And then reuse user password as root password. Sure, why not? That way I don't have to remember two different passwords for the DT user and the root account. You do have the option to tick on login automatically without asking for a password. I don't recommend that uh, for privacy reasons. I would always recommend having to type a password to get into your computer. Otherwise, you're just asking for trouble then I'm gonna click next and then we get a summary of everything that we have run through so far everything looks good I'm gonna click the install button we get a warning saying the KOS installer is about to make changes to your disk in order to install 2022.06. You will not be able to undo these changes. So it's about to format the hard drive and start writing to it and that's exactly what I wanted to do so I'm gonna click install now and away it goes. This portion of the installation on my hardware typically takes uh, about five to 10 minutes for most Linux installations. So I'm gonna pause the video and I'll be back once the installation has completed. The installation has completed. That took seven or eight minutes probably for the installer. And now we have the option of close the installer so we can still play around in the live environment or click the button to restart the system. And that's what I'm gonna do. So let's go ahead and restart our freshly installed KOS. And we get to our login manager here, and I really like the look of this login manager here. Let me move my head so we can change user, shut down, restart, sleep, and of course I just need to enter my password to log us into our KDE Plasma desktop. And we're logged in and we're greeted with a very attractive welcome program. I noticed the name of the program here in the title bar is Croeso. I'm not sure what that means. I'm assuming that is a... Uh, word that means hello or welcome uh, that's typically what people name these kinds of programs i believe the country of origin for kos the distribution is the united states so i'm not really sure what language uh, this word croeso is but uh, if you're ever in need of actually looking for the welcome program you're going to need of course to know the name croeso because if i just type welcome yeah something else comes up splash screen hello hello doesn't return anything so uh, that is an unfortunate choice in a name I think you can't actually search for welcome and actually get the program in the menu system but luckily it auto launches the very first time you log in but this is a very slick welcome program you can adjust various theming options for example widget styles I'm assuming that's for the KDE plasmoids uh, you can change mouse behavior you can change the theming the icon set your font settings yada 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 and then you have tabs at the bottom so this was the customized tab here the main screen but if we go to packages yeah, we can play around with installing some different software. If I go to web browsers, we can uh, install Firefox, Google Chrome, Opera, Otter browser, right? We've got some different options. If I go back and I choose email clients, we can install Kmail, Thunderbird, Trojita, and Cube. I've never actually heard of Cube. I'm, I'm 
I might have to try that now. That's a new email client to me. We have a wallpaper tab here where I guess we can download various wallpapers. I'm assuming these are coming from Unsplash. So that is rather nice. Then you have the docs tab here where you get some more buttons so you can get documentation about various things such as Pac-Man. Yes, they're going to use Pac-Man for their package manager. Even though it's an independent distribution, it's not a arch distribution. They are using Pac-Man, which isn't that unusual because you will see some non-Arch distributions use Pac-Man, for example, because it's not like it's designed strictly for Arch. If you build a distribution, an independent distribution like KOS, for example, you can choose any package manager to build your distribution around. You could have chosen App or you know RPM or you know Zipper or something like that, DNF. You, you could do a lot of different things. For example, I know at least one Red Hat based distribution or at least RPM based distribution, PC Linux OS. It actually uses Debian's apt package manager for their package manager rather than YUM or DNF. So not that strange. You also have documentation about switching to uh, the various NVIDIA drivers. Now in this virtual machine, I, I'm using free drivers for the virtual machine, but NVIDIA users, especially on KDE Plasma, NVIDIA and KDE Plasma, sometimes they have issues. So that's good that they have some information about that. Now, additional kernels, if you wanted to install a different kernel. We have the advanced tab here, which gives us more options for firewalls, adding users, network management. This is... This is one of the best welcome applications I think I have ever seen, if not the best. Like the way it's laid out and it's packed with so much useful information about KOS, tells you a little bit about the distribution, then the news. Of course, we get the latest release announcement for the latest release. Then you have the quit button. If I go back to customize and go back to the very first screen, you will notice that this is set to auto start every time you log in. If you don't want it to auto start all the time, of course, you'd want to tick that off and close it and then You'll never see it again unless, of course, you go into the menu system and type for, what was it? Crow SO. <laughs> then you could get it back up. So I'm going to go through the menu system and see what is installed as far as the default suite of applications. So let's break it down by category. So let's go into games. They only have one game, K Patience. And in graphics, we really don't have anything here as well. WinView, which is KDE's image viewer. And you also have Ocular, which is KDE's PDF viewer, their document viewer. Under the internet category, we have Falcon for the web browser. <laughs> that would explain why they had the uh, web browser thing in the welcome screen as far as do you want Firefox, do you want Chrome? I, I didn't realize they were shipping such a horrible web browser by default. This is actually KDE's web browser. It's part of the default suite of KDE applications, but I doubt most people would want to run this as a web browser. So you're probably going to want to go through that welcome screen and actually install something like Firefox to get uh, something that's a, a little better than Falcon. Uh, also under the internet category, you have KGit, which is a download manager, part of the KDE suite of applications. Quassel, which is an IRC client, really nice IRC client. It doesn't look like it was going to auto connect to like a KOS support channel or anything. I always think that's a nice touch when distributions actually have their IRC clients automatically join their own channel that way people that are having trouble maybe installing that particular linux distribution can actually get help immediately also under internet we had cfile which is a desktop sync client i've never actually played with cfile before we have a multimedia category we have elisa which is a, a music player part of again a kde app so everything here is going to be either a default kde applications or at the very least it should probably should be a cute based application. Also under multimedia, we have K3B, which is a disk burner. It's actually my favorite disk burning utility. I know not everybody burns disk anymore. I still do. And K3B is by far the best free and open source disk burner out there. I always install it. Every time I install Linux, that's one of the first programs I install, K3B. I know that makes me sound like a boomer. I'm still burning uh, CDs and DVDs and Blu-rays, but hey, you know, I, I still find a need for those. We have Haruna, which is a video player. I've never heard of Haruna, so this is a new one to me. If I go to About Haruna, a configurable video player. This is version 0.8.0. .0. It looks like it is part of the KDE apps because it's using KDE Frameworks 5.95. Yeah, 
Also under multimedia, we have Camoso, which is our webcam program, MPV, which is just a, a video player. It's probably a dependency for Haruna. We also have Simple Screen Recorder, which you can use to record your desktop. Under the Office category, we don't have anything because I didn't install LibreOffice, but if I had to tick that on, obviously the LibreOffice suite would be here in the Office category. Then we have our Settings, which is the Plasma System Settings, which let's go ahead and get into that because I want to see a little bit what we can do with theming. For one thing, I'm not crazy about the default theme. It's a little too bright for me. So let's see if we can turn on the dark mode. So if I click on Apply, let me move my head there. The apply button was down here. I noticed when I hit apply though, it's still white here, the bottom part of that window. So I think that's a, a little bit of a glitch, but it did change the theme. If I go into appearance, we can also change um, from breeze to breeze dark to breeze twilight. I'm not sure what their default was. It looks like, uh, let's see. I can't even read what the buttons are saying. If I chose breeze twilight, yeah, it's a little glitchy changing the themes, at least inside this VM. I'm not sure exactly what those buttons were saying. It was asking me something, but without being able to read it, I have no idea. I wonder if I logged out and logged back in, would the theming be correct? Let me actually try that. So let me go ahead and log out. Let me log back in. All right, and let me get into the menu system and do system settings. Yeah, it's still a little strange, the appearance here. And if I try to choose this, yeah, there, there's something very off with the theming, especially the, uh, the dark theme. But even the default light theme that was turned on by default, if I click on it and then click apply, I think it's going to still have the same problems if I go to appearance and go to breeze twilight. Yeah, I can actually read it now. So, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to stick with the light theme just for the sake of the dark theme is kind of broken where I'm going to have dialogue windows that I won't be able to read. So I better just stick with the default theme. I noticed our wallpaper went away. <laughs> we had a little crash for the wallpaper. I wonder where I can actually change the wallpaper. Let me do a search here because I'm not that familiar with KDE Plasma. Oh, well, when I tried to close the window, the wallpaper came back. I get this. Uh, the settings for the current module have changed. Do you want to apply the changes or discard them? Yeah, apply. I don't know. Then it went back to the dark theme, didn't it? <laughs> ah, that's a little glitchy, right? It's a little glitchy. Apply and then try to close. Okay, that time it took. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's, you know, again, it's a a little bit of a bug or it could just be user error. I don't use KDE Plasma that often. And it's not like I, I ever live in KDE Plasma. Typically, the only time you guys see me use KDE Plasma, that's all I ever use KDE Plasma. I never run it <laughs> on my own time, right? I, I always run uh, tiling window managers, typically. But if I go to uh, right-click on the desktop, configure desktop and wallpaper, let's see what kind of wallpapers we have available. I'm assuming it's just going to be like the default KDE wallpaper pack. Yeah. A lot of the same stuff I've seen before, but you know, KDE does have really nice wallpapers. I love the abstract art stuff. Oh, here's one that's really nice. That is a beautiful photograph. Huh, let's try Safe Landing. That's the name of this picture here. Ooh, that is bright, kind of busy for me. Here's an oldie but a goodie, the shell wallpaper. And Utopic City. Yeah, that's not bad. I'm going to go to one of my familiar favorites that I often use on Plasma. <laughs> this one here, that's rather nice. Now let's check out this really interesting panel here. So obviously you have the menu here, and this is the Kickstart menu. If I right click, you could configure Application Launcher. You've got some things you could play around with if you wanted to. And then you had the Session buttons right up under the menu. Again, that's not not typically where you'd want that because you could accidentally hit those and it's not really, I don't know. It's probably not where I would have put that. Then you have your sticky note application, you have your calculator, 
Uh, people, uh, some people obviously use a calculator all the time, but most people have no need for a calculator to be there. Then you have your workspace switcher. Again, kind of an odd place amongst all of these launchers here, these program launchers. Then you have Dolphin, which of course is KDE's file manager. And it looks like, yeah, I like how the hidden files and directories are kind of grayed out, right? You can kind of barely see them. Uh, I probably would, yeah, if you take off uh, show hidden files, you know, they just go away. But even when you show them, they're kind of blurred out. I'm sure there's an option to actually change that because that's kind of annoying, to be honest. And then you have Kate, which, of course, is a plain text editor, part of the KDE suite of applications. And then, of course, our web browser, the Falcon web browser. Let's open a terminal. Would Control-Alt-T open a terminal? No. So let me hit Super and type Console. So KDE's Console, of course, which, oh, I don't know why by default it opened with that uh, geometry there because that was a really, really tiny window. Also, it's kind of a tiny font, but let me make that full screen. The font I can correct because I can zoom in. I, I like the prompt here. I wonder if they're using uh, Bash or ZSH or maybe even Fish. I could check if I type ZSH. ZSH is not found, so I'm assuming, of course, we're in Bash, so I just entered a bash uh, subshell. Let me exit back out of that one. So it is bash, but that is a neat little bash prompt they're using. So let's do a sudo pacman-syu. Let's see what programs are available for an update. This has been out for about a week, and it looks like there's about 10 things that need to update, including our login manager, sddm, and also Pulse Audio is getting an update. Let's go ahead and take that because none of these programs are very big. It should just take a few seconds. Now let me do a sudo pacman s and I'm going to try to install something, something that you know, I would expect to be on most Linux distributions. Now KOS focuses mainly on KDE Plasma. They don't have any other desktop environments or window manager additions like officially. So I wonder would Xmonad actually be in their repositories? Target not found. Okay, so and this is one of the things with KOS being an independent distribution. Their repositories of software, very small. They only package a, a little over a thousand packages in the KOS repos, where obviously something like Debian and Arch have tens of thousands of packages in their repositories. So you're, you're going to find some stuff that, you know, programs that you want to run that are not going to be packaged for KOS. Now, that's for me because I use a lot of weird stuff for your normal kind of computer user. They're probably just going to install KOS. The default suite of applications will be fine. They'll never really need to go search for anything weird. And certainly normal programs like your everyday things like Firefox and Chrome and all that, of course, is available. And also these days, because Linux, we have these universal packaging formats like Snap, Flatpak, App Image, most mainstream programs are going to be packaged in one or even all of those available formats, which all of those should work on KOS. KOS does use systemd as an it's a NIT system. So no problems running snaps, flat packs, app images. I wonder if HTOP is installed out of the box. HTOP is not here. Surely HTOP has got to be in their repository. It is. All right. I was about to Throw my hands up in the air in frustration if HTOP wouldn't have been in the repos. That's a standard, like a Linux staple right there. Let's see how system resource usage is. Now, I've opened a bunch of programs here, so the uh, RAM number could be a little high because there could still be some background processes running from some of the stuff I've opened, but it's using almost no CPU because we're not really doing anything, about 2% CPU, and it's using 900 megs of the 6 gigs of RAM that I gave this virtual machine. Let's do a uname-r. Let's get the kernel there on kernel 5.17.15. Let's get a count of the programs installed out of the box. So if I did Pac-Man dash, I believe it's capital Q, lowercase q, right? To get a list of all the programs that are installed. And if I piped that into the word count program, so pipe that into WC and give WC this flag, dash L for line count, meaning this output where everything is on its own line, I want a line count of it. 917 packages installed out of the box. That is 
pretty minimal actually and I didn't choose the minimal install so the minimal install probably would be really minimal because that's not a lot of programs for a, a full desktop environment and suite of applications. One thing we should also take a look at is do you have to install software at the command line or is there a graphical software center? So if I type for software they are using Octopi. Octopi is actually really nice. Octopi kind of reminds me of the old Debian Synaptic package manager. So Debian has a, a graphical package manager called Synaptic that breaks things down by category and it has a search field where you can search the entire Debian repositories and Octopi kind of looks a little like the old Synaptic package manager. Not exactly out in Synaptic. I don't believe is a cute app. I believe it's a GTK app anyway, but they do have that same kind of look and feel. Zero AD is in the repositories for KOS. I think that's a very important application to actually have in your distributions repositories. A fantastic game, free and open source. So that's nice that they have some kind of GUI package manager. Was Discover here? I, uh, if I type for Discover, no. Uh, what's the other KDE uh, store? But anyway, software, when you just type the word software, the only thing that comes up is Octopi. So I'm assuming that's the your only options is either use Octopi or just use Pac-Man at the command line. Now, one thing that kind of bugs me and I want to change uh, I, I want this panel to move, so if I right click on it and go into edit mode, and now can I drag to move? Yes, we can just drag it over here, hit the close button, and I think that makes a lot more sense. Click the close button over here. I think that makes a lot more sense for that panel to be right there <laughs> than where it was. So I think I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to keep this VM around. I do think KOS is interesting. I, I think it, it's nice to have these independent distributions that are doing their own thing. They're focused on KDE Plasma. That's a very unique KDE Plasma desktop, especially the way they had that, that right-hand panel. So I, I, job well done. KOS has actually been around for a while. This is probably the third or fourth time I've taken a look at it on this channel in the five years or so I've been doing this channel. But I know it existed before I started doing the YouTube channel five years ago. So it doesn't get a lot of attention. And I think part of the reason it doesn't get a lot of attention, I think that small repository of software they have, I think it hurts them a little bit. I, th I think that's often the problem with these independent distributions. I know I've complained about Solus. Solus is a fantastic distribution except for the fact that there are certain programs I want to run that are not packaged in the Solus repositories and that's going to be the case with KOS. That's pro I, I could never personally run KOS. There's too much stuff I rely on that I couldn't actually get installed through the traditional means using a KOS. But if you're a m much more generic kind of normal computer user where you can just install KDE Plasma and you're fine with the default suite of applications and you're good. I think it's a fascinating distribution and one I am going to keep up with in the future. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Dustin Gabe, James, Matt, Maxim, Michael, Mitchell, Paul West, Wanya Bald, Homie, Alan, Armor Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Dai, Yokai, Dylan, Marstrom, Erion, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Vador, Polytech, Reality, for Less, Red Private, Steven, Tools, Devler, and Willie, these guys. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at KOS would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, without each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't do what I do. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I depend on you guys, the community. If you like my work, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys. I still think they should have pronounced it chaos. That's a missed opportunity.